Hey guys, in this video we're going to be learning how to um, randomly spawn objects, or that's what people call it in games, create objects um, off scene and then move them on scene. And to do that, um, we're going to use the arc for random function uh, and the update function, which are both built in. Um, but a couple things first, a couple housekeeping uh, items. If you've, ever, if you've ever watched uh, the new Boston videos, that was kind of where I learned how to code it for the first for the first couple languages I used. And he used to say, got to do some housekeeping um, when he was cleaning up the code. But uh, yeah, so anyway, we gotta. I'm gonna get rid of this path because. We don't really need it. And I made it down here so that you... Sorry, I was kind of spacing out. Uh, I made it so that touches don't spawn circles. Um, and then we're going to say self.physicsbody is equal to sk physics body. equals. Okay, so now we have that frame thing. Um, okay, so scratch that. I want to, I want that back. I want, I want it to spawn circles when you click. Um, and I don't want it to start out with this one. we did um, self dot frame dot size dot height minus location dot y and that actually that was what we needed to do to create it at the correct point. Okay. Uh, next thing, we are going to create a function called void. It's going to be called um, create obstacle. I'm going to create a square obstacle randomly. Um, and it's going to take a CG point for the location. Okay, so let's make a new SK node. Sprite node, sorry. There are SK nodes also, but they don't have the sprite node with image named uh, capability. Call it node. I know that's really generic. You could call it something like obstacle, sprite node, star, or asterisk, obstacle if you wanted, but I don't really care for that. Okay, so we're going to do it from color. Um, SK color. If you can hear that clicking in the background, that's my roommate. I'm filming this from my dorm. And He's constantly clicking. Okay, um, SK color. Let's see. We're gonna make it gray, and its size will be 50 CG size make. Sorry, 50 by 20. There's just gonna be a little platform. Okay, and then we need to give it a physics body. Size is going to be self dot frame dot size. Okay, and then node dot physics body. Um, mm. 
and then no dot physics body dot affected by gravity is going to be no and no dot physics body dot dynamic is going to be and we'll say yes for now okay and what I'm going to be doing oh we have to add it to update function which is a built-in function that runs automatically 60 times per second um, yeah basically it runs a, whatever code you have in this block right here 60 times a second uh, so we're gonna say arc we're gonna say if arc for random remainder 1000 or right, we'll do 100 no, we'll do 1000 um, greater than 2, then we want to uh, self-create obstacle at a CG point make um, arc for random uh, self dot screen or no, self dot frame dot size dot width. Um, this is this would generate a number between zero and the width of the frame, but we don't quite want to do that. We want to make sure that this value is uh, that it doesn't get generated partially off the screen. Um, so since it's 50 pixels wide. Um, We'll do minus 50, which is two times half the width, and then we'll add half the width. So what this does is it generates a random number between this whole line right here generates a random number between 25 and the screen width minus 25 basically um, then we'll do the same thing for the height but or for the y value but instead of using 50 we'll use 20 and 10 Integer, so we'll have to cast this. It looks like, yeah. Um, I guess you can only use modulus on arc for random with an integer. Uh, okay, so let me explain this for a sec. So this generates a random number between zero and a thousand. Um, this happens once every sixty seconds. Um, so, if this was 600, for example, um, and this was, sorry, this is supposed to be less than 1, this generates a random number between 0 and 599, basically. If that number is less than 1, 0, then create the obstacle. Um, so basically, based on probability, a random obstacle will be created every 10 seconds. Um, that's a little bit too infrequent for us, so let's go with 3,000, 300, sorry. Um, and then down here, what I'm doing is creating an obstacle that at a random x and y location within the frame, um, and I made sure that the obstacle can't be created partially off screen, uh, because we don't want it to interfere with our edge loop. Okay. 
so let's see what that's like. Paused the video and came back. It took me forever to figure this out. <laughs> Somehow I failed to set a location. Okay. And one other thing is this should be height. Okay. Give that a run. should be node. Come on. There we go. Oh, look at that. Uh, it spawned randomly down there. When they don't have gravity, it's like they're in space. It's really cool. Um, let's see what happens if we say no to dynamic. Hopefully it doesn't take forever to spawn a box. Ah, uh, look at that. They're like platforms. Cool. Um, one problem is they're going to spawn forever and fill up the screen eventually. But uh, there you go. That's that's how you make um, objects like at a random time. You can do it at a random position too um, for games. Like, for example, if you were making Doodle Jump, you would do it at a random X location at a random time, a somewhat random time. Or like if you were doing a platformer, you could uh, randomly create objects that they have to dodge that come from the right at a random interval and Y location or something like that. Uh, but yeah, so I use this a lot. I use R for random in um, the update function a lot. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.